So let's have a look at a different methodology again. And this one is called the spiral methodology. So let's jump right in and see what it's all about. Let's start by demystifying this diagram. We'll come back to it after we've looked at how this works, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how this is quite different to the ones we've seen before. So first of all, in this case, it actually starts down here in the analysis stage. And obviously the first analysis stage is actually analyzing what you have to do. So once you've analyzed what it is you want to do, you then move on to the prototype. So you're into designing a prototype really, really early on. And once you've analyzed and you've moved on to designing a prototype, your next stage is to test the prototype over here. And that then moves on to evaluating the prototype up here. But you can see that the spiral then starts again and you analyze the prototype that you've made. Having done that, you then move down and you either change the prototype and then you move on to test it and you move on to evaluate it. And you can see why it's called the spiral because this methodology involves you moving round and round and round. And the idea is that each circle that you do, as you move around it, you get closer and closer to the final product. So this is a, a mixture, actually, of a waterfall and an iterative methodology. And it has certain advantages, certain disadvantages, and it works for certain types of projects. So let's go in and look at how this actually works. This one's probably more complex than the others we've looked at so far. So it's known as a meta model. Meta is a very fashionable word at the moment. Meta means above. If you think about um, an image and recording an image's metadata, which might be information such as where it was recorded, uh, the number of megapixels, the size of the file, and so on. That's metadata. It's data that it covers everything inside one area. So meta is like a view from above. So it's known as a meta model because it borrows from other models, the iterative model and the waterfall model. Now this one uses prototypes. We've come across this before but it uses prototypes and therefore gives it flexibility, but it also has uh, some of the rigidity of the waterfall structure. So the prototypes that are used uh, in the spiral model can either be fully functional, in other words, they, they do what they're supposed to do, or they can be partly functional, so they do some of what they're supposed to do in the final iteration, or they could be non-functional. They might do nothing that they're supposed to do. They might look like uh, an approximation of what they're supposed to be at the end. So the prototypes are, work on, are worked on and you get closer and closer to the final product as you work through them. As you make each prototype, that leads to further design and adaptation, which is tested and evaluated. Now this evaluation paragraph here which we'd seen in the uh, in the diagram and the evaluations of course up here this requires certain skills so you've got evaluation happening at every single iteration the evaluations lead to further design changes and this cycle continues until both client and developer are satisfied that the product does what it's supposed to do so hopefully now looking at this at this slide it starts to make a little bit more sense that we start off by analyzing what it is we want to do. That moves us into designing a prototype. From there, we test it. We go and we evaluate what we've done. And that leads us then onto design and so on. And we just keep going round and round and round. And in the end, you should, you should end up with the product that the customer actually wants. When should you use this? methodology. This tends to be used in high risk projects. Why? Well, because it's flexible, but also there's a rigidity to it. And it means that you're able to change direction quickly. A high risk project 
would be a project where you don't know everything in advance. So that's why it would suit that. And it has that capacity because it combines both the waterfall and the prototype model. And as we saw, these activities are arranged in the form of a spiral. So it's also good for highly customized projects. And that's where a customer wants something which is bespoke. It needs to be made specifically for them and it can't necessarily be based on what's been made for other people. Often, in the case of databases or software or websites, you're producing something which is quite close to what's been produced before. But if you want something which is cutting edge, brand new, or simply hasn't been done before, then this might be a good choice of methodology in those instances. Advantages. It's flexible. The development phases can also change based on the complexity of the project. So for example, let's go back to our, uh, our diagram again. In the development uh, phase, so we're up here at the, uh, having analyzed it, and this design phase here, those can be as long or as short as required. And that gives this a certain amount of flexibility, which you don't get elsewhere. Um, monitoring is easy for this project because each loop requires a review. Um, changes can be introduced easily later on because you haven't got the rigidity of having to go back in order to solve something. In order to solve something, you go forward. However, you also are able to estimate how much your project will cost and how long it'll take. That estimate, that estimate becomes much more accurate the further that you move through the project as your iterations become more and more accurately aligned with the end result that you're looking for. Okay, so disadvantages. It's, it's a high cost methodology because you are making so many iterations and you're evaluating it at every single turn. So it tends to be that you're repeating several phases a number of times and therefore it will be high cost. But of course, given that you'll be doing this with high risk projects, you would expect a higher cost because the project is going to be larger by definition and more risky and therefore likely to be more costly. Now, you wouldn't choose this project, um, this methodology for projects with a clear SRS. SRS being Software Requirement Specification. It's a fancy way of saying, if you knew exactly what you had to do up front and it wasn't gonna change, there'd be no point in doing this, this management system. It, 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 would be, it would be overkill, there'd be no purpose in doing it. Um, one of the other issues is that this evaluative skill that's required and let's go back up to explain why. This evaluation that takes place here, you need to have experienced people on hand to do that. Experience, that equals that, money. So you've got to have people that you're paying money to who are experienced. You pay everyone money, but more money to these guys because they've got the experience to recognize whether this prototype is actually heading in the right direction or not. Okay, so let's go back down to uh, the <coughs> disadvantages. And this is actually another way of saying that these things, they are suitable for high risk projects. Therefore, there's no point in using it for a low risk project. It just, it, it, it wouldn't take you any further forward. Meeting budgetary and scheduling requirements is tough because it's an expensive methodology. So really, that's just another way of restating the first point we made there. And then lastly, the management of it is complex. And a lot of documentation is needed at intermediate stages. And again, if we go back to our uh, diagram here, you can see that you're going to require uh, documentation when you analyze. You're going to require documentation when you make your prototype documentation when you test it and documentation when you evaluate it. So this project is actually going to require a lot of documentation 
and therefore a lot of extra cost. So it's quite tough to stick to uh, your budgets when you're running with this particular methodology. Mm -hmm.